Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Today's show presented by Roan. The men's dress shirt was due for a radical reinvention, and Roan has stepped up to the challenge thanks to their commuter collection. Gets you through the workday and into whatever comes next. 20% off when you use promo code CHATSPORTS at Roan.com slash CHATSPORTS. We're looking today at the top Dallas Cowboys free agent targets. Before we get to my list, and it's 30 deep, by the way, a bit longer than most years. But, eh, you know, there's so many names that make some semblance of sense. I want to hear from you guys. Name a player who you want to sign in NFL free agency. Get that player name or names if you're an overachiever in the comment section right now. In no particular order, it's a future video, some top needs for the Cowboys to consider. A wide receiver stands out. Offensive line, defensive line, namely the tackle spot jumps out to me. Cornerback, you need a second starter. And depending on what you do with Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, etc., running back, also a big area of need. A lot of the names on our list will focus on those five positions. First, the bonus five, because I'm an overachiever myself. These guys are probably too pricey, but wouldn't it be nice if the Cowboys actually made a splash move? Deron Payne, my dream target this year. Eh, franchise tag could happen for him. James Bradbury and Javon Hargrave. Let's make the Eagles worse and add one of their really good defensive players. Got a Gakwe. I think ideally is like your number three pass rusher, but he's probably going to get paid more like a number one or a number two. But man, he'd be dynamic and just a almost pure situational pass rusher role. But he's probably too important from that standpoint. Jamel Dean might be the second best corner. Also, again, probably a bit expensive. Let's go to the big sexy name, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, you guys knew that one might be on there. The Cowboys will revisit this, although I wonder if maybe now he's a bit too expensive. I don't know. OBJ is... If he can help me, sure, I have interest. We'll see if he can actually help me, though. Do you want to sign Odell Beckham Jr.? Type in OBJ for yes or no BJ for no in the comment section right now. Some other receivers will kind of run. We'll run through these guys fast because it's not a 45-minute video. DJ Chark. In general, I would like a speedy receiver, and DJ Chark fits that. He brings the size this Cowboys team tends to prefer. Again, has battled injuries in recent years, making him a viable buy-low candidate who is better than James Washington is. Miko Hardman has never produced the way you had hoped he would with Patrick Mahomes, which makes me question if he'd suddenly be better with a lesser quarterback and Dak Prescott. But again, I need speed. He fits that mold. So does Paris Campbell. Now, Campbell's more of a slot guy for the Colts, so that might not appeal that much to the Cowboys. Coming off a... A slotty season, right? 63 catches for only 623 yards, but again, he's fast. Darius Slayton of the Giants offers that speed, bigger body on the outside, but coming off a 700-plus yard season, the money might be a factor. I won't say that too much because, well, we know how the Cowboys are. Juju Smith-Schuster is next up here. The Cowboys had some semblance of interest in the draft in the past there. Had a decent year, actually, for the Chiefs. Just a few touchdowns. Wasn't as appealing. Almost had 1,000 yards. I'm curious what his market looks like this year. Time for the pinned comment. And this one, hoo, 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 I know it'll be controversial. Will the Cowboys actually do something this year? I am ready once again to get my hopes up a little bit and for them to do next to nothing. Get those predictions at the pinned comment. It's why for yes and for no on if the Cowboys will actually do something. If an ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Let's go to the defensive line. So I have talked about Dalvin Tomlinson a couple years ago when the Giants first cut him and or, or a lot of them leave in free agency. like, I want Dalvin Tomlinson. And, you know, I never get my way in free agency. He's going to be a free agent again. He'll be cheaper, I think, this time around. I still have interest. How about Puna Ford, who should have been drafted out of Texas, but... He's 5'11", 310 pounds, and that's the coolest build ever. Uh, undersized, more of a nose guard type, but does still offer some pass rushing value. If you want to upgrade from Jonathan Hankins, that's a good name to consider. Another fatty on the list, Sean Robinson, who has not been the same guy he was at his peak between the Lions and Rams. He's not the same guy, but would probably be cheaper, actually, than what Greg Gaines would be. Draymond Jones might be this year's candidate for, wait, he got how much money? In free agency. Uh, under the radar player, ascending player for the Denver Broncos, 6'3", 281. I think he's at his best. 
uh, as a three technique. He and Oso would be a dynamic duo, but the price might be a bit out of the Cowboys' range. But he's a dark horse, big-time name. Somewhat, maybe, maybe expensive name, I should say, to consider. Men's closets would were due for a radical reinvention, and Roan has stepped up to the challenge. I'm rocking one of their shirts today because I want to look good, feel good, play good in the office, on air, and, of course, at home. And if you do as well, Roan is right up your alley. Products for every occasion, thanks to the Commuter Collection. T-shirts, shirts, uh, polos, dress shirts, uh, outerwear, pants. They've got you covered because mobility is everything, comfort is everything, and you want to look good in the process, and Roan does just that. Four-way stretch fabric provides versatility, breathability, and flexibility. Leaves you free to enjoy whatever life throws your way from commute to work, to whatever you do afterwards, golf, out at night, night out, date night, whatever. The commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off everything you order when you head to r-h-o-n-e dot com slash chat sports and use code CHATSPORTS. Find your corner office comfort and upgrade your closet today with Roan. Link and promo code are in the comment section and the description of today's video. Let's go to Marcus Davenport. This is one of my more aggressive names on the list here. The production was bad this year. Half a sack, two TFLs, but makes him a buy low candidate. Cowboys had some interest in him out of UTSA, from what I recall, way back when. I think it's a buy low edge. I'm not trying to spend big, at most part, with my edge rusher because I got Micah, I got Tank Lawrence, Sam Williams. When I get a fourth cheap guy in that three-ish million dollar a year range like Dante Fowler was, that starts to really appeal to me and get a buy low guy, have him cash in next year in free agency, and then I get a comp, back, comp pick. So Marcus Davenport checks that box for me. And Cowboys legend Robert Quinn does as well. The numbers were not good this year, but he'll be a free agent. Uh, now that the Eagles kind of redid his deal and they traded for him from the Bears, decent name to consider. Let's hit the offensive line. Ben Powers is first up on my list here. We mentioned him as part of our ideal off-season plan. Several of these names, of course, overlapping here, right? Ben Powers, look, yeah, I'm looking for a plug-and-play guard, keep Tyler Smith at left tackle, Figure out what you're doing with Tyron Smith, but that makes left guard a big need for me. And I'd like a veteran in there so it's not Tyler Smith, rookie, Biotish, ideally. So Ben Powers, that's like Suimalo out of the Eagles. Again, third division rival. He had a great year at Oregon State. Uh, very, very talented player. I would love Dalton Reisner. That Broncos offensive line took a step back this year. So did Reisner, but that entire offense was... A bit of a dumpster fire, so I'm not too upset about that one there. Will Hernandez... Of the Cardinals from the Giants, he was linked productively to the Cowboys when he came out of UTSA or Texas El Paso as well. So, I, I, again, I've got interest in all these guys that plug and play on the offensive line. Another more intriguing name is Isaiah Wynn. And this would give me some flexibility at either guard or tackle, even maybe right tackle if you had to. Kind of a chess piece I can now use on the offensive line, given what he's done in the past there. I'd probably play him at left guard with Tyler Smith next to him, but he fell out of favor in New England, had a down year, won't be as expensive, I think, as a result. I also wouldn't mind a veteran swing tackle, so Cowboys legend Cam Fleming, yeah, He's still around. He did not play that well for Denver uh, because, again, he's a swing tackle. He's not someone you really want playing. It'd be close to a vet minimum deal on that front. And that does, of course, check the boxes a bit more for Catboy Stephen Jones. Now, if when the Cowboys sign someone, we will have you covered. Hopefully, it won't be uh, Dante Fowler, James Washington within like, uh, I think those were like a week apart. Like there was two moves on a Friday that came within like three hours of each other. We'll have you guys covered. Whether it's at home, in the office, there will be a video. Hit that sub button right now. Depending on what you do at running back, you could look for a cheaper veteran option than maybe paying Tony Pollard and or doing the Zeke deal. Damian Harris, player I've liked out of Alabama for the Patriots, kind of got banged up this year. Ramondre Stevenson kind of surpassed him. Buy low, cheaper running back contract, good argument for it. Now, David Montgomery is the bigger, sexier name on this list because, hey, we've heard of David Montgomery. We all remember the absurd ESPN graphic of the player comparison where he was 
apparently the greatest running back ever. He's not. He's about a four-yard per carry guy, but kind of like Zeke, he does some good things in short yardage, and 201 for 801 is a little bit better than what Zeke did. I actually like Devin Singletary, by the way. I think he's an undervalued player. He's smaller, but as a committee back, he can put up around that production. So maybe you tag Pollard and sign Singletary to a cheap one-year deal. I have interest there. In general, outside of Pollard, I'm not breaking the bank for any back this year. Rashad Penny, meanwhile, and even Pollard not breaking the bank that much. Penny coming off injury. When he's healthy, he's explosive, dynamic, and really good. But he's never healthy, and that will bring down his value. Finally, Jamal Williams, and I can't believe I'm saying this. It's the Ezekiel Elliott upgrade button. Short yardage, red zone machine, but it's going to get you like maybe four yards a carry. Uh, I, I think the touchdowns are appealing, but the actual overall running isn't nearly that level, and that will keep his value down a little bit. But you know what you're getting with Jamal Williams. He'd be a cheaper alternative to, compared to Zeke's current contract, I should say, in that kind of third short, short yardage backup red zone machine at RB. Now, when it comes to the Cowboys and free agency, <laughs> this is a tough one. What is your confidence level in Catboy Stephen Jones? Scale it from 1 to 10. You can be honest with me. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Let's move to cornerback. Cameron Sutton out of Tennessee. Guy I've always liked. Again, has some inside-outside flex. Played pretty well for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but still kind of under the radar. Shouldn't be as expensive as like the James Bradbury types. Good name to consider in that kind of position flex mode. If you want to keep Deron Bland, Mukwamu as options, you add Cam Sutton. You're actually okay overall cornerback with different options on the inside and on the outside. If you want some bigger veteran names, how about Patrick Peterson, who might retire. Teams did not throw his way that much this year uh, for Minnesota because their other corners are bad, but he kind of plateaued down the stretch, and he might only have one, maybe two years left. A younger corner is Byron Murphy from the Cardinals, who I loved coming out of Washington, and he hasn't been that guy in Arizona. Maybe it's some defensive scheme stuff, inside-outside flex there. This is a little bit in the mold of the Will McClay special. Younger guy, draft pick, early draft pick. Maybe you find some success with a hopefully cheaper option. Another veteran name is Marcus Peters. Now, I don't know if he's going to play. He might retire. The age is going to catch up with him. But if you want a veteran stopgap on a one-year deal at cornerback two, and then fingers crossed, Bland, Mukwamu, Joseph Wright, draft pick step up, you could do a lot worse than Marcus Peters. When it comes to just free agency in general, this team, really, I should say in general, what is the Cowboys' singular biggest need? Let me know in the comment section what the biggest position need is. Can't say owner, even though it's true, for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's look at some quarterbacks, because you might lose Cooper Rush and Brinson, and that's fine. Two names to consider. Taylor Heineke fits the backup quarterback mold. He'll, he'll make some plays for you. The, I think the players would trust him like they did trust Cooper Rush. He's also, the numbers don't show it. There were a lot of turnover-worthy plays. I believe percentage-wise he led the NFL in turnover plays that could have happened but didn't because of a drop or a flag or whatever. So he's a backup. And their commander's going to roll with Sam Howe. I could do a one-year, like, two, three million dollar deal for Heineke. And maybe Baker Mayfield, too. Yeah, we'll throw him on there. No, you're not going to go get a quarterback that would actually challenge Dak because... Well, there's one of those guys. His name is Lamar Jackson. He's going to get tagged, so like, it just doesn't make any sense. Um... And, you know, I, you're not going to pay starting money for Jimmy Garoppolo back. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe Baker could come down cheap. Uh, his chip-on-the-shoulder attitude might not work as a backup. I'm not sure, but I'd at least explore that one because he was a little bit better for the Rams, who, by the way, maybe, maybe they just keep him and back up Matthew Stafford for another season. And you know we weren't getting out of here. You knew it. We weren't getting out of here without another safety option. My boy Juan Thornhill. He's kind of been an up-and-down player. Interceptions. Gets beat a few times, too. Loved him out of Virginia. I desperately wanted him as the pick over uh, that disastrous second-round error in Tristan Hill. If they had just listened to me. I was, like many of you, I was hammering for a safety. He'd be great with Dan Quinn. If you lose Donovan Wilson... It's my guy. I'd also probably just keep Donovan Wilson at this point. But yeah, I'm throwing in one safety for you guys at the end of today's vid.